What causes obesity? How do medications such as semaglutide, terzepatide, and rotatrutide target your body's incretin and glucagon systems to cause weight loss, lower blood sugar levels, and in the case of rotatrutide, remove fat from the liver too? Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley, and today I'm going to talk about how the most effective weight loss medications ever invented mimic the action of your body's own hormones, GLP-1, GIP, and glucagon just at a much higher level than seen normally. The most effective weight loss medication of all may be rotatrutide, which acts as a triple G agonist, mimicking the actions of all three of these receptors at the same time. Weight gain is affected by your appetite, how well you metabolize glucose, and by your overall energy expenditure. There are many interacting feedback mechanisms involving your hypothalamus, brainstem, stomach, gut, liver, thyroid, pancreas, and adipose or fat tissue. Many gastrointestinal hormones are involved, including GLP-1, GIP, insulin, glucagon, leptin, and ghrelin, to name a few. All of these hormones decrease your appetite with the exception of ghrelin, which increases your appetite. The most effective medication to treat obesity would ideally impact many of these mechanisms, not just one. This is similar to weight loss surgery, which affects appetite, glucose metabolism, and energy expenditure, in part by increasing the level of certain hormones in your body, such as GLP-1. So how do drug makers choose which hormones to upregulate so that you can lose weight and lower your blood sugar level. Let's look at the most at the recent timeline of hormone-based medications to treat diabetes and obesity. Specifically, we're going to look at semaglutide or ozempic, terzepatide or manjaro, and the latest medication not yet in clinical use, rotatrutide. So what's the first step for drug companies? Upregulating the action of GLP-1. This is a hormone released from the L cells of your gut lining when exposed to food. GLP-1 is an incretin hormone, meaning that it triggers your pancreas to release insulin and lower blood sugar levels. This is a good choice as we know that GLP-1 is upregulated in the body after highly effective weight loss surgeries. GLP-1 agonist drugs such as semaglutide or ozempic lower blood sugar levels and cause weight loss by triggering insulin release and by decreasing your appetite. So what would be step two for the drug companies? That would be designing a drug that upregulates two GI hormones to cause even more weight loss and better diabetes control. What other hormones would be able to act synergistically with GLP-1 in this way? Well, they added the action of GIP, another incretin hormone released by the eye cells of the gut lining upon exposure to food. Similar to GLP-1, GIP increases the release of insulin from the pancreas, thereby lowering your blood sugar levels. Medications such as terzepatide or manjaro upregulate the action of both GLP-1 and GIP. Recent studies show that Patients on terzepatide may lose even more weight and achieve better diabetes control than those on semaglutide. The most recent development is the triple agonist medication, which acts on three receptors in your body, GLP-1, GIP, and glucagon. By upregulating glucagon, this drug can also potentially reverse fatty liver disease. Glucagon is the opposite of insulin. It increases blood sugar levels while insulin decreases blood sugar levels. Glucagon primarily acts in the liver where it breaks down liver fat to make glucose, which it releases into the bloodstream. Getting rid of liver fat is great, but glucagon also increases blood glucose levels, which would be bad for diabetics. Potential solution to this problem would be adding the effects of GLP-1 and GIP to lower 
blood glucose levels to counteract those unwanted effects of glucagon. An example of the so-called triple G agonist medication is retitrutide, now in phase two clinical trials. By upregulating GLP-1, GIP, and glucagon, retitrutide can act on your brain to decrease your appetite and food intake, leading to weight loss. By activating glucagon receptors, it can also increase your overall energy expenditure by increasing the rates of thermogenesis or heat production in your brown adipose tissue. Recent clinical trials involving diabetics and non-diabetic obese individuals have shown dramatic weight loss with rotatrutide. In one trial, once weekly treatment with subcutaneous rotatrutide led to an average weight loss of 24% at one year compared to 2% weight loss in patients on placebo. This is comparable to the amount of weight loss seen after bariatric surgeries such as sleep gastrectomy and ruin y gastric bypass. In the same trial, a subgroup analysis looked at 93 individuals with fatty liver disease. Those on the highest dose of rotatrutide had an 86% decrease in their liver fat at one year. In addition, 93% of the subjects on the 12 milligram dose of retitrutide experienced resolution of their fatty liver disease. For reference, a liver that contains more than 5% fat is considered to be a fatty liver. Probably about at least 30% of US adults have fatty liver disease. Over time, a significant proportion of patients with fatty liver disease also develop cirrhosis and liver failure. Most patients with type 2 diabetes also have fatty liver disease. The difference with retitrutide is that it uses GLP-1 and GIP to trigger insulin release and lower blood glucose levels while also activating glucagon to get rid of liver fat and increase your energy expenditure. This is the evolution of medications targeting the incretin glucagon system to treat diabetes, obesity, and fatty liver. The process starts with GLP-1 agonists such as semaglutide. It then progresses to GLP-1 GIP agonists such as terzepatide. We finally arrive at the triple G agonist medication retitrutide, which targets GLP-1, GIP, and glucagon to treat obesity, diabetes, and fatty liver. Thank you for listening. I hope this is helpful for you.